Welcome to Coffee Talks with Dr. Lennox Hoyt of the Pelvic Floor Institute. We are sitting down today to talk with the doctor about a few selected topics related to women's health and the like. These topics run the gamut from the mundane to the rather unusual. <laughs> and we'd like to get a gynecologist take on each one. Uh, so Dr. Hoyt, if you'd like to introduce yourself a little, we can get started. Hi, my name is Lennox Hoyt. I'm a board certified specialist in uh, OBGYN, obstetrics and gynecology, as well as subspecialty trained and certified in female public medicine and reconstructive surgery. Uh, in my practice, we look after women with a variety of pelvic floor disorders, including bowel and bladder control problems, uh, urinary incontinence, prolapse, and certain types of pelvic floor dysfunction. Well, we're so glad that you could join us. Let's get started with what seems like the most ordinary of the topics, that is soy consumption. According to the World Agricultural Network, soybean production and consumption has been on a steep incline since the Second World War. As of 2016, the soybean was the nation's second largest crop, outgrown only by corn. And although Americans are far from the highest volume soy consumers in the world, China holds that distinction, we have certainly increased our intake since the middle of the last century, particularly those who eat a lot of meat substitutes as part of a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. But of course, soy is known to contain estrogen. What should patients who consume soy on a regular basis be mindful of? Well, I think by and large, as long as uh, we recognize and understand that soy contains uh, versions of estrogen and steroid hormones that the human body uses uh, to regulate women's menstrual cycles, for example, and her hormone levels. I think if we can uh, take notice of the fact that increased soy intake will increase the amount of estrogen-like compounds that uh, a woman uh, or a man would ingest over the course of the day, uh, that can change the hormone balance in the body and I think women need to be mindful of the fact that highly increased uh, intake of uh, soy proteins and estrogen-like products can change their hormonal balance, and, um, uh, affect their reproductive cycle and uh, alter their menstrual cycle. That's certainly a possibility that women should be discussing with their uh, pelvic floor uh, or medical care specialists. Okay, all right. So. Um you wouldn't necessarily put a warning label on us. It increased soy consumption, though. I think the uh, FDA Food and Drug Administration here in the U.S. has not placed any warning labels on increased soy consumption, and I think that's fair. Uh, I just think that women should be aware that if they notice that along with their increased uh, soy intake, that they're noticing change in their uh, hormonal balance, their reproductive cycles, and such uh, that they should uh, take the matter up with their healthcare provider. I don't think it bears on a warning uh, label type level at this point. Okay, I think that's a valuable circumstance to be aware of. Um, Definitely talk with your healthcare provider if you are noticing any of these issues in combination with a diet high in soybean products. The next issue that we'll discuss is one many women may have researched for themselves uh, that of vaginal douching. What is your professional opinion on this practice? I think all gynecologists and pelvic floor care specialists will agree that the vagina is really, really, really very good at keeping itself clean. So it's like a self-cleaning oven that regulates its um, status uh, internally and its biochemistry internally. It represents a really highly balanced biochemical environment that works to prevent the uh, bladder infections, it works to prevent vaginal dryness, and it works to lubricate the vagina and keep uh, unhealthy uh, bacteria out. I think if you uh, go toward something artificial like douching or putting artificial uh, fluids or uh, preparations inside the vagina and attempt to clean it, you cannot do as well as the vagina does on its own to keep itself clean. So all gynecologists that I know of uh, would agree that douching is probably not something that should be done by women uh, because it affects and uh, adversely alters the vaginal environment in a way that is not good. 
Yeah, I think that's a comparison many women have heard before, the vagina as a self-cleaning appliance. Um, and it's definitely an important one to keep in mind, that, that comparison. But um, moving on to our next topic, let me explain a bit about this one to you, and uh, we'll get your medical two cents, as it were. Uh, laser vaginal rejuvenation is touted as a treatment method uh, for retightening the vagina following a, a quote, traumatic uh, event, such as vaginal childbirth. Um, many companies offer the original laser vaginal rejuvenation, or LVR as it is known, um, which utilizes the laser for creating incisions and doing dissections, more of a traditional surgical approach, um, but with a laser. Uh, and there is another method of LVR um, that takes a less invasive approach, purporting to deliver with the laser, quote, pulsed laser energy to the stretched connective tissue surrounding the vagina. Um, what would you say to a patient who came into your office and told you, told you she was planning to have one form or another of this procedure done? Well, like many um, generic um, statements, Laser vaginal rejuvenation has means different things to different people. I think many people talk about a um, low intensity laser that's used to alter the uh, cellular and collagen uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, fabric of the vaginal mucosa. Yeah. Uh, these uh, therapies, uh, uh, while interesting and intriguing, have not been FDA approved for treating the vag vaginal walls. There's no uh, substantial data to support that their use is safe uh, or even efficacious or as in useful. And I think until such data is available um, and FDA approval comes is forthcoming, I don't think that that's, those are therapies that um, will reliably benefit uh, women uh, with a side effect profile that is considered to be reasonable. I think they're still experimental. Okay, so let's move on to a topic that much of our audience may not have heard of or may not have heard of yet, uh, the Jade Egg. Uh, now the Jade Egg is the name of a product which is just that. Um, it's an egg-shaped uh, orb rock of various sizes made of jade. Uh, it comes in small, medium, and large and each is purported to serve a different purpose. Now according to the website of the company that we found that does uh, sell it, its overall benefits include toning of the pelvic floor uh, through a sort of vaginal strength training regimen, uh, improved orgasm, hormone balance, and, f quote, feminine energy. Uh, and what's more, the individual quoted by the Jade Egg retailer stated that the egg could and should be worn throughout the day as well as at night. Uh, the only time, according to this website, that you should not wear the egg is during your period or pregnancy. Um, what would you say to a patient who came into the office suggesting that um, she has plans to purchase and use such a, a device? Again, as most things go, uh, we talked earlier about the fact that the vagina is very capable of keeping itself clean and appropriately healthy. I think there are many uh, licensed, uh, capable uh, pelvic floor physical therapists who can uh, treat women uh, in need of rehabilitation of the female pelvic floor. I think it's been scientifically proven and shown that pelvic floor physical therapy can have a positive uh, impact on the pelvic floor function. Uh, I don't know that there is any data to support the use of uh, products like this one that you mentioned uh, to improve vaginal function. Uh, I don't know that the data is there and it's certainly not FDA approved. Uh, one of the risks that I can see uh, with a product like this is that uh, depending on the um, quality of the surface of the jade egg, it can represent a source for bacteria or uh, unfriendly bugs that can in, uh, come into the vagina and colonize the vagina as a result of being uh, adsorbed uh, into these products. And so until there is appropriate uh, testing scientific data and FDA approval, I would advise my patients to stay away from these products. If they are in need of pelvic floor rehabilitation, there is a large number of qualified, well-trained 
certified pelvic floor physical therapist who can provide that service to women at very, very reasonable cost. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind and, and a good practice to have taking care of yourself and, and seeking uh, medical treatment when necessary. Um, of course, the website does instruct users to boil the egg before first use, and I'm sure there are additional cleaning instructions, but in such a sensitive area, precaution is the name of the game. Now, the more important, or the more important for this discussion, proclaimed benefit of the jade egg is the prevention of uterine prolapse. Uh, presumably, that would be the result of strengthening the pelvic floor, and as an expert in the female pelvic floor, you know, board certified, fellowship trained, uh, in other words, someone who ought to know, what is your impression of this claim? I certainly can speak to the uh, female pelvic organ prolapse uh, angle on this, because pelvic organ prolapse is a very well-defined condition that affects uh, a large number of women, uh, especially those who have undergone uh, vaginal childbirth. Prolapse is a a falling down or a descent of the vaginal walls uh, which can present themselves as a bulging out of the vagina in into the lower vagina and sometimes even into the uh, area outside the labia so pelvic organ prolapse is a mechanical condition which happens as a result of loss of support uh, stretching or breakage of the ligaments or stretching of the vagina uh, the vaginal tissues and as such pelvic organ prolapse by itself cannot be cured by an external non-mechanical device. The risk of pelvic organ prolapse really relates to childbirth and uh, other activities that involve straining a lot like heavy lifting, uh, parachute jumping, uh, chronic straining and constipation and such. So it's hard for me to see uh, why putting uh, devices inside the vagina would reduce the risk of pelvic organ prolapse. I don't know that there's any data that's credible that's out there to support these devices being used to prevent pelvic organ prolapse. Okay, very good. And um, now seems like uh, as good a time as any to move on to our next topic, uh, vaginal weightlifting. This particular trend has become popular on social media with BuzzFeed and other media companies jumping on the bandwagon to try it out. Uh, just as you would expect by, based on the name, the practice involves performing a Kegel-like movement to raise a, a weight which is suspended by a string from another apparatus which is inserted into the vagina. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think uh, that uh, devices that help to rehabilitate the pelvic floor muscles and I say rehabilitate rather than strengthen because rehabilitation implies that the pelvic floor muscle is able to raise and lower uh, in order to support the pelvic tissues. I think methods that can help to rehabilitate the pelvic floor are helpful in uh, helping women to cope, manage, and maybe even prevent the development or worsening of pelvic organ prolapse. They're not a cure for pelvic organ prolapse, and I think such Exercises, therapies, and treatments are available by a wide variety of qualified, highly trained, certified pelvic floor physical therapists who can do an excellent job of helping you to rehabilitate your pelvic floor organ, your pelvic floor muscles and tissues without the need for use of these untested uh, devices uh, which uh, do not have scientific data to support them. Absolutely. Uh, you can ask your healthcare provider for the name or names of recommended physical therapists. They'd be happy to provide them for you if they have them. But um, let's move on to our last topic, vaginal steaming, or V-steam, as it is known. This practice involves sitting on top of a bowl of boiling water, or, or very hot water, often filled with a potpourri of herbs and spices. Uh, celebrities have jumped on this bandwagon and YouTube boasts several DIY tutorials for women seeking to recreate the experience at home. Now, the allegedly Korean practice is said to date back several hundreds of years, and although it is hard to evaluate the truth of that statement, we can discuss the trend in terms of its medical efficacy. In fact, uh, you recently tweeted an article 
about this topic, a woman was injured while steaming her vagina. Again, uh, regarding vaginal steaming, I would again reinforce that the vagina is extremely capable of taking care of itself, of cleaning itself, of keeping itself healthy on its own. It usually does not need help uh, to keep itself clean or healthy or protect itself and the bladder from uh, infections. I think that in the absence of good scientific data uh, and FDA approval, which is usually based on scientific data, uh, such devices do not demonstrate a clear benefit to women and may actually cause harm to, to women who uh, unwittingly use them in ways that can cause them harm. So I again would suggest that a woman would contact her uh, pelvic floor care specialist, uh, approach a pelvic floor physical therapist, and there are many qualified such pelvic floor physical therapists around, uh, and discuss options for helping them to manage their particular pelvic floor disorder. Uh, and usually such women can find uh, appropriate therapy that is satisfactory and curative for them. Yes, yes, and, and that's really what we want for you, uh, our female listeners, if this is something that you are struggling with, the, the issues that would bring you to the point of the uh, this vaginal steaming. We, of course, want you to seek the, the appropriate help through your health care provider, your licensed health care provider, who can point you in the right direction. Um, but moving on to just one last little uh, tidbit that... Uh, relates to the vaginal steaming. Uh, the website for the spa that we found, which offers the V-steam, uh, uh, as much as states that this procedure, this process, this service, is beneficial for postpartum mothers in promoting the production of breast milk, reducing postpartum depression, and healing uh, vaginal atrophy, a common problem and cause of pain with sexual intercourse. Uh, it seems clear that you do not endorse the vaginal steaming process, and although you no longer practice obstetrics, I wonder how you would advise a new mother who is experiencing pain with uh, sex and has not had a first period after giving birth. Well, I think it's important to recognize that following delivery uh, of, a, of a pregnancy uh, in a woman who's breastfeeding, uh, the act of breastfeeding decreases her body's estrogen levels and that will dramatically affect the vaginal uh, dryness and moisturization. So women who continue to breastfeed usually will not have a period. It's usually harder, though not impossible, for a woman to get pregnant if she has intercourse during the breastfeeding period. And in fact, the body's estrogen levels being lower uh, will cause a situation in which the vagina seems almost menopausal in nature. Those women can experience pain with intercourse, uh, uh, and if that is the case, uh, a woman uh, in that situation can talk to her pelvic floor specialist, uh, perhaps about starting on a course of vaginal estrogen therapy uh, to uh, help uh, increase the estrogen levels in the vagina and make the vagina more uh, uh, better lubricated and, suit and suitable and amenable for intercourse. Wonderful. Okay. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I think the issue of vaginal dryness uh, in a woman that is still of reproductive age who may be on birth control uh, pills, low-dose uh, hormone, uh, hormone therapy for birth control, that can also create an, a trophic, uh, low estrogen level situation in the vagina, which can sometimes cause pain with intercourse. And that woman should also be uh, seeking to talk to her uh, specialist, pelvic floor specialist, about potentially vaginal estrogen therapy to help improve the uh, estrogenization and improve the um, sensations during intercourse. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lennox Boyd of the Pelvic Floor Institute. Uh, this is, of course, Coffee Talks with Dr. Hoyt, but thank you so much for sitting down with us, and we look forward to uh, chatting with you again uh, next time about a, another topic, or a series of topics. Thank you so much, my pleasure.